You're listening to the Ask Drone You podcast. You ask, we answer your drone questions. Whether you're here to turn your passion into profit or you simply fly for fun, we're a community of learners and teachers who aspire to achieve greatness. We are Drone You. Hey everyone, are you interested in a paleo diet? Are you always looking for meals and snacks that don't have sugar in them? Well, you've got to check out Salt and Pepper Charky because it is paleo certified. No sugar, no high fructose corn syrup, no glucose syrup, no corn syrup, nothing with sugar whatsoever. Those of you who are ketogenic that may follow the Bulletproof diet, I'm sure you guys are familiar with that guy, the Bulletproof coffee, low carb, low sugar, that's the ketogenic diet. For you guys, you may love sweet and spicy, because I know I do, and I've actually been using the ketogenic diet myself to lose weight. It's been on in my Freedom Journal, it's been on my goals, I've lost 15 pounds, I'm stoked, and honestly, I've been replacing a lot of snacks with Charky. I'm not just saying that, I really did do it, and it really helps curb my hunger. So if you're in ketogenic, you love the low sugar, check out Sweet and Spicy. You can go to charky.love. It'll auto forward you to Amazon where you can pick yours up. But if you want the paleo certified stuff, go to amazon.com and search salt and pepper charky. That's C-H-A-R-K-I. Why? Because it's better than beef. Welcome guys to another awesome episode of Ask Drone You. My name is Paul. And my name is Rob, and this is episode number 551. Thanks, guys, for hanging out with us. We really, really appreciate it, as always. And we have a big announcement today. What's our big announcement today, Rob? Our big announcement is that we are giving away an annual membership to Drone You. How much is that worth? That's worth about 700 bucks. That's a lot of 600 money. 600 bucks. That's a lot of money. Yeah, it is a lot of money, actually. Giving back to the people. We love giving these away, and we've chosen a name. Wait a minute, 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 wait a minute. Yes, what sir. does someone get with this? This is a this is a full membership. Full membership. So access to all the courses. All the courses. Even the new ones that are coming out this week. Even the new ones that are going to be coming out very soon. I like how you said very soon. Even all the resources. All the resources. What about all the webinars? The webinars are you mean included. They could even become a part of the Freedom Journal group to help them reach their goals in business. They can become a part of the Freedom Journal group. They get to become a part of the community, which many argue is the most valuable part of being a part of Drone You. This seems like it's a pretty good giveaway there. Um, yeah, never mind. I don't think we should give it away. Okay, moving on. <laughs> <laughs> no, actually, the winner is. Drum roll. Brrr. <laughs> Mr. Nathan Alexander, hopefully you're listening. If not, we're going to reach out to you, or you can email us at support at the I'm going to look up Nathan. We do right have now. your email, so don't email us saying that you're Nathan. Yeah. Because we know who you are. So, in fact, we'll just email you. No worries. Congratulations. Thank you for being a listener of Drone You. And even more importantly, thank you for sending questions in because one of the reasons that Nathan won is because he sends a lot of questions in, and so his chances went up. Awesome. I think I just found Nathan on Facebook here. If he's from Austin, Texas, good friend of Cam Sales, we'll see, who's a Drone You member, and Frank Tessa, who's a Drone You member. But congratulations, bud. Seriously. Yeah. yeah, it's very cool. It is very cool. I'm excited to see you in the community. I'm excited just to give this away because really it helps everyone out. Wait, where, which one is Nathan? I think that's him. The bearded Jesus. That. <laughs> <laughs> you know what? Actually, Nathan, I'm really glad that he won. He's a good guy. Yeah. We do know him. He's been a member in the past and for various reasons was not able to continue, but he's coming back for free for a year. Boop, boop. That's awesome. All that right. Awesome. Let's get to today's question because everyone is so excited about that. All right. And by the way, we give one of those away every 50 episodes. So if your question is one of those that are asked on the podcast, then you're put into the running. So in case you were wondering, here's the question. Hi, this is Mike. And my question is in regard to being able to fly. I live in kind of rural Pennsylvania and I got the Before You Fly app from the, uh, the FFA and so I go out to fly my drone and it's, you, you're not supposed to fly within five miles of an airport. Well, apparently there are many more airports than I realized because there is hardly anywhere that you can apparently fly the drone according to that rule because it's showing, you know, like helipads and little dirt runways that nobody ever uses and stuff like that. So, I mean, how much of that is actually where you can't fly? And is, is there like a good rule of thumb for doing like low-level flights? 
that you're not even going to be anywhere near where the airplanes are. Stuff like that. Thanks. Okay, thank you for the question, Mike. Really appreciate it. And guys, if you have a question, don't forget to go to askdroneu.com. Get your question asked so that we can get it on the air just as quickly as we can. Love your questions. Appreciate you guys. Without the questions that you send in, this podcast doesn't work. So keep them coming. I will say, considering how well the FAA made the Before You Fly app, the future farmers of America should have made it instead. <laughs> oh, ouch. That one cut deep. Uh, guys, guys, guys. Um, number one, don't use Before You Fly. Just I, Why? Because there's so much bad information on there. Okay. First of all, the heliports, you don't have to follow that rule, essentially. If there is a heliport in your area, should you call them and notify them that you're going to fly? Absolutely. But you're supposed to yield to manned aircraft no matter what. Right. Um, that being said, you're only not allowed to fly in controlled airspace. Now, I know this is something for commercial operators, not hobbyists. Hobbyists are supposed to notify the tower when they're within five miles of an airport. Does that and mean only for the airports that have a tower? Correct. Okay. That are controlled, controlled airspace. Because if there is an old airstrip that hasn't been used in 100 years, like, for example, there's one right by Drone U. It's mm -hmm. a mile and a half away. It's uh, the old Coronado airstrip. Mm -hmm. It's between Alameda and Tramway. No one even knows it exists. It's actually right. owned by the Sandia Reservation. That's on before you fly. Do we have to notice yield? yield? No. No, we don't have to yield at all. Right. So there's a lot of bad information on there. Also, you're not going to find... Uh, what is it called? The ceiling and the floor of the airspace that you're in. I love AirMap. AirMap isn't always perfect. That's airmap.io or app.airmap.io. Um, you can use airnav.com or skyvector.com to get better information on where controlled airspace is. Remember, it's not restricted airspace. It's what's controlled and uncontrolled. For hobbyists, it's really difficult because they say, you know, if you're within five miles of an airport, you're not supposed to fly. First of all... It, what matters is what kind of airport it is. Is it a towered airport? Is it a controlled airspace airport? That's really what's more important. But also, you should notify the tower if you're flying recreationally. Emphasis on notify. Notify. Right. If you're flying recreationally. Do a lot of people do it? No. Does it, is it helpful? Sure. Is the airport going to pick up? It depends on how busy the airspace is. And if they don't? Leave a message. Leave a message. I'm notifying you just that I am. Yes. Just remember, guys, yield to manned aircraft. Yield, yield, yield. Don't try to get the coolest shot ever. You're right. It's not going to help you or us or anyone else flying drones, so don't do it. Um, that being said, uh, before you fly is not good. Airmap. Dot io you can actually click recreational or commercial it's going to give you the information on where you can where you can't fly it's going to give you information on how to notify the airports and it's going to give you much more accurate information than what you'll find on before you fly i think we've said it hundreds of times before you fly is not accurate it's not reliable um which is why they've it. contracted to have something created that will be much more user friendly and beneficial and actually helpful. Yeah. That's so yeah. That's the word on the street there, Rob. That is the word on the street. So currently though, if you're gonna go fly, let's say you're in a new city, how are you gonna figure out whether or not you can fly I, where you need to? I have a systematic process because airspace is very complex and it's why I've told Rob, please don't answer airspace questions that come into the community. Yeah, um, so if you do email me at support for airspace, airspace, questions, airspace questions, you're going to get a really mean response from me saying, grow up, learn how to do this yourself, take the time, Rob is not the answer. And, and what I would say is I think the majority of you are trying, and it's confusing, it's hard, and so you're just trying to make sure and you're thinking that we are the experts and therefore will know not necessarily... I, we so, could put a bunch of time and research it, but we don't have that time. No, and put it up in the community because Ted, Ted will have access to this. There are a bunch of man pilots who have sectional knowledge who can answer these questions in the community. If you're like, oh, well, I'm not a member and I can't go in the community and ask these questions, then become a member because Rob is not going to answer your questions on airspace. He's not the authority. Well, Ted is. Let's put it that you don't want me answering. There's some that are very obvious and every now and then if I see that it's really obvious, I might, but you don't want me answering your and, complicated airspace and honestly, questions. Yeah, and honestly, guys, if you're doing 
doing this for business and and here's the thing I even hesitate on saying doing it for business if you're flying you're taking a risk period and if you don't know how to measure the risk of the airspace that you're in because you can't read a sectional you probably shouldn't be flying yeah just throwing that out there that may be a little aggressive for me to say but in today's day and age where we've got a lot of information at our hands it's really not difficult to say that okay so I'm and if you can't handle that you're too sensitive damn it so <laughs> this is Paul, guys. This is this I'm, is my life. Okay, I'm so. the hardliner. <laughs> Rob is the. It's okay. We're gonna move on, and we're, we're gonna, gonna figure answer this the question, out. Which is why Rob and I work great together. That's right. So. I'm going to push a little bit. You said you have a system without giving that entire system on this podcast. I don't mind giving my system. Well, I, I don't know if we have time is the reason I say that. What can you give in a, in a succinct manner? The, if we were to talk about this, like how they handle business at the DMV, it would be like, pull out your phone, unlock your phone, go to your home screen. Okay, let's not do that. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so what I normally do is I pull up air map first and I, I look up the location of where I'm supposed to fly. Once I look up air map, I then go to sky vector because it's the actual sectional. Okay, so I'm going to ask I, some, I'm sorry to cut you off, but I'm going to ask I some. I didn't even get to finish, but yeah, no, go for dumb, it. Dumb. Okay, thank you. Potentially obvious questions, but when you say I'm going to search, what are you searching? Coordinates, an address? Um, I'm normally searching for an address. If you have coordinates, you can pop them into Google. You can pop them into AirNav. You can get those coordinates. I like to find a physical address okay. just for me because then I can even put up in Google Navigation, and I'll explain that in a second. Anyway, so I go to app.airmap.io. That's where I look first. Then I look at SkyVector. Then I look at, what is it? Um, gosh, I am AirNav is mm -hmm. the last one because okay. AirNav has, uh, it's really the best, uh, satellite overlay, but you can't zoom in as much as you can on a sectional with Sky Vector. You've really got to use these three maps and overlay them together to get the most accurate information because I say that and I give the example of San Diego's airspace. Mm -hmm. I've seen guys, and this is why, this is another proof and reason why drone use community is better than most Facebook groups online. Uh, I saw a guy on the commercial SUAS operators page and he's asking for information about flying in San Diego's airspace. And he's trying to fly in a spot that I have flown before. And he's like, I've seen someone else post footage from here, and I just I question if it's legal or not, blah, blah, blah. And he goes to this page, and everyone tells him it's illegal. He's, oh, you can't fly there, you can't fly there, you can't fly there. Well, if you pull up Sky Vector, and then you pull up Air Nav, you notice that in this, this upside down wedding cake of airspace, there's this little sliver, like a slice of cake that's been taken out because you can fly right there. Mm -hmm. But a lot of people don't know that. And, and, and I didn't know that either. Exactly. I had to actually ask Ted. I'm like, you know, this looks really confusing to me because it looks like I can fly here based on the waypoints. But based on the airspace and there's the doghouse over here, it looks like I can't fly. And he's like, well, you got to look at the floor. What's the ceiling? What's the floor? And that's you gotta where look you do at it air nav. That's yes. the air nav part of it. You got to look at it in 3D and there's right. no 3D option yet. This is why we had that podcast about air map showing the FAA just two weeks ago, a 3D app that shows you exactly mm. what I'm talking about, but also allows you to get airspace authorizations right there on the spot. So this guy went to commercial SUAS operators. Everyone told him it was illegal. And I realized right then and there, I should not post and correct this guy. No. Because this is a perfect example of why the drone you community is better. And it's better because of people like Ted, who is a certified flight instructor with the FAA, who knows how intricate and, it, and just difficult these sectionals can be. Um, you know, and that's why it's it's so important to be poignant about the the language that we use. You know, it's not we're not looking for airspace that's towered or untowered. It's controlled or uncontrolled airspace. Okay. You know, it's these really minute nuances that make a big difference. So when this guy was looking for the San Diego airspace, he got shut down by like thirty people. And um, I showed it to Vic and another person, and I said, this is a perfect example of why our community is amazing. Mm -hmm. Because people are getting the wrong information in other groups, and they think it's right. Yeah. And, and that's it, fascinating to me. So which is going to result in a couple of things. One is they're not going to do things that they potentially could do. That guy could have just lost out on a million dollars. Yeah. If he were to literally take on six construction sites over the course of a year, over 10 years, he just lost a million dollars. Yeah. 
You know, you never know what's going to not come of that. The and thing they is, say laziness doesn't cost you money. But if he would have, you know, looked at the people, if he would have done his his research, if he would have called uh, a certified flight instructor and asked them, he would have got the right information. Right. But he didn't take it to that level. And well, that's, and I think a lot of people don't even know what they don't know, right? And so that's another thing but that, shouldn't that you we ask, try to help people figure out. But So let's take that, right? There are a lot of things about drones that you don't know. There's a lot of things about other subjects that I don't know that you do. Mm-hmm. Like Rob's really good at flipping houses. That being said, there are a lot of things and a lot of nuances I don't know. And whenever I go into a new situation where I don't know, I ask myself the question, how can I verify this source or how can I verify this information? Because, again, it comes down to that rule of threes. You know, if one person says my dad is a mean Mm -mm. person, that's not true. If two people say my dad is a mean person, that's not true. If three people say my dad is a mean mofo, then d- dang it, he's a mean mofo. That's and right. that's the rule of threes. And you can use the rule of threes in getting good, solid information. If it can be verified by three different people, it's solid information. So the connection here is that you're saying you're doing this with three different sources, essentially. And the sources are verified, too. They're verified sources. And then you're, like you said, you're layering them on top of each other, sort of. Yeah. And then and using people that are information. like, oh, that takes so much time. If you want good information, if you want to have the competitive advantage in your business, in your life, you have to be willing to deep dive into any subject. Yeah. And the thing about that is, yes, it takes a little bit of work to get to that point, but now you know about this little secret Mm -hmm. in San Diego, you're not going to have to go do that again. No. And the funny thing is I even verified this. I wrote an authorization for this airspace in San Diego and I got an email back that says, you don't need it, buddy. (laughs) So I have proof of this, you know, and right. It's just, and that was me verifying the fact that Ted was right. Mm -hmm. So even though I didn't know, I still verified that he was right. Yeah. You know what I mean? So it just, it just goes to show that the source, the validity, legitimacy, you have got to take it to the extra step if you want to succeed in life. It's just no matter what the information is, you cannot take anything at face value. Absolutely. And by the way, this is a class that short course that you need to do for drone you members you know that right what this, this whole system this process of airspace well, authorization you hear that ilker i'm gonna add that to the list <laughs> i know yes we're supposed to do these briefings after these sessions right to come up with these things or there's one you know what i'm gonna start a new note right now <laughs> <laughs> On that bombshell, guys, I hope that answers the question. Thank you very much for listening because we care. And the experience I wanted to show because I want you, and I know a lot of you do trust us, but I want the new people to trust us and know the difference between us and the other groups because there is a significant difference. You just have to seek it out. So anyway, guys, you mean the world to me. Thank you so much. Vlog is coming out soon. It will be living the drone life with Taken Flight. So uh, check it out. Anyway, it's not up yet. Won't be for probably a week or two. I keep going back and forth on my edits there, Rob. So anyway, guys, it's going to do it for us today. My name is Paul. My name is Rob. This is Ask Drone You.